What are the best bank accounts in Germany and why is it so hard for certain internationals to open one? In this video, we will dive deep into the German bank market. Also, we would give an updated roundup of all the best banks so you can have all the information and make an informed decision for you. Hey, my name is Jen and I'm from Guatemala. And mine is Yvonne and I'm German. And together we're from SimpleGermany.com where we create English content to empower internationals to settle into life in Germany more smoothly. smoothly. But wait, didn't we already do a banking video? We sure did. However, the German bank market is so dynamic and it changes all the time that we decided that we needed an update for 2022. To give you actually the most up-to-date information. Make sure to stay until the end of the video where we will answer some of the questions that we got from the last video. Certain questions like, can I open a bank account from outside of Germany? May I have more than one German bank account? So make sure to stick around for that. So let's first talk about the big disclaimer. We are not personal banking or financial advisors. The information that is in this video is based on our personal experience and research. Now that we got that out of the way, now let's talk about the first thing, which is the dilemma of opening a bank account in Germany. The dilemma is that your nationality matters. It matters often already when it comes to your visa. However, in this case, it matters in a different way because it's not really a first world versus emerging economies kind of world. It's more a world of the bank sets the rules and they're individual from other banks. So sometimes banks claim that the restriction for nationalities they accept relies on the partner that they use for online identity verification, like companies like ID Now, for example. However, several banks use ID Now, yet they all accept different nationalities. So we beg to question, is that the real reason? Yeah. Other sources say that it has to do with some security reasons in terms of passports tend to be easier uh, duplicated or fraudulent or how do you say that? Uh, they have less security features. They let, they, exactly. They have less security features than others. Certain countries tend to have more money, money laundering things than others. So at the end of the day, we don't know the real reason. It's a bit of an obscure reason. All we know is that each bank has a list of countries that they accept and each of those countries have certain requirements that they need to meet. To know the list of countries, on our website we have a comparison table and on there there are links for each of the banks to the list of countries that they accept, nationalities, and what documents are required from each nationality. We cannot go into detail here because it's a because thousand it varies. variations. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> so be sure before you try to open an account with any bank to really click on that link, check whether your nationality that you want to apply with, that you hold a password with, um, is part of that list because if it's not, don't even bother. It's just a waste of your time. Now let's clarify, which we didn't do in our previous video, why we don't talk about certain banks that you might see everywhere on the street once you're in Germany. And that is pretty much the typical, most traditional German bank like Sparkasse and Volksbank. Those are like the top two, I would say. Why we don't talk about them is first of all, they're utterly traditional, they're utterly German and <laughs> From our example here, when we go to the local Sparkasse Düsseldorf, they have funky opening hours. Like they really are only available on like one on Wednesdays and half days on Fridays. And we actually did stand a line and did talk to someone to question how is it, how easy is it to open an account? Because also we read from you that sometimes you have to wait two weeks for an appointment. And that is true. If you are one of the nationalities that cannot verify themselves online, you do need to do that in person and you can't just walk in. You need an appointment for that. So it's just simply tedious. Second of all, they charge fees for just having an account, which some of you might, don't, might, might not mind paying that, but there are other options. And third of all, literally everything is in German and slow and via snail mail. I would uh, actually argue that Sparkasse does have their online banking and an app also in English. It's not all in German. However, the process to sign up and everything and the customer service usually is in German. And another thing is that, <laughs> this is actually, I didn't know this before, but as, as certain things like Sparkasse and Volksbank, they are kind of like regional banks. So we have a friend who has an account with Volksbank and then she moved there for a few years to Berlin and she wanted to do a transaction from Berlin and she went to Volksbank and they told her, no, no, you cannot do that here. You need to go to your branch in Dusseldorf. And they're like, and she's like, but I'm in Berlin. Doesn't matter. Your bank is in Dusseldorf and that's where you need to go. Long story short, she had to go through a bureaucratic process, send a letter, do all these things, jump through all these hoops just to be able to finish her transaction in Dusseldorf. <laughs> Meaning that not all Sparkassen and Volksbanks are the same around Germany. They are very tied to your location. Yes. And it seems that they don't share one uh, system. No. And I would even argue that maybe the Sparkasse in Dusseldorf is different than the Sparkasse in Berlin. 
Of course, yes, because it's called Sparkasse Düsseldorf. And even for the Sparkasse in Cologne and Bonn, which are the neighboring cities, it's called Sparkasse Köln Bonn. So even those are different. Yeah. yeah. So that's just for your information. I mean, please go with them if that's what you want. But for us, it's just not the most most appropriate choice um, for English speakers. Now, the very famous DKB. When you read the terms and conditions of DKB, it sounds amazing, really. Although I must say it's interesting because it's all in German. Yes. However, there's a high demand for this service for international people. But DKB is notoriously known for not accepting international people into their services. I have applied twice to DKB and I have been rejected twice from DKB. <laughs> Just to clarify, DKB is a purely online bank, but it's very popular amongst Germans. I'm a very happy customer. Um, so it is a very good bank, in my opinion, in my use case. However, not available to everyone. Another contender when you read about uh, best bank accounts in Germany is Revolut, or Revolut, as probably because they're from the UK. So first of all, they are from the UK. It's not a German bank. So if we're talking about German banks, they don't make the list. <laughs> However, second of all, I have had horrible experiences with Revolut. I had my bank account. I paid online for a service to the German post office. You cannot go more German than that in Euro. But when I checked my bank statement, actually the transaction was in pounds with a transaction fee for paying in euros. It was horrible. And when I contacted the customer service, it took me around an hour fighting for me to get that feedback because I didn't understand why I needed to pay in pounds when my account was in euros and the payment was in euros. Long story short, after that horrible experience, I emptied my bank account and I have never used them again. So I would say we're a bit biased with Revolut just because of that experience that we have. I don't know if things have changed in 2022. I honestly don't want to try. <laughs> and last but not least of banks that didn't make our list is the famous Comdirect. Quite popular also amongst Germans. It is purely in German. Even the banking app is only in German. And it has been bought. It's always been a subsidiary of Commerzbank. And Commerzbank, we are going to talk about more in this video, who has more services in English. Okay, so now we are actually going to dive into, in our opinion, best bank accounts for English speakers in Germany at this point of recording. <laughs> Things may change in the future. Um, and these comparisons are all based on the current account or checking account for your day-to-day -day life. So that is it. In German, it's called Girokonto. Number one is N26. If you have been here for some time, you might have heard of N26 before. It's because N26 has revolutionized, revolutionized the German banking market because I think it was the very first English-speaking online banking, super easy digitalized bank that existed in Germany. Yes. In Germany. When I arrived to Germany, N26 did not exist. And I actually found out about them five years after I had been living here from other colleagues and friends. And I was mind blown, like, wait, there's a bank that's in English online. And the cool thing is that N26 now has their own banking license. Means that they are, someone asked in a comment, are they approved by the German Committee of Finances? Yes, yes they are a proper bank. <laughs> the cool thing is that they also offer a free checking account, which is called the Standard Plan. And of course, they also offer premium plans that you need to pay monthly for them for more benefits. However, we're focusing in this video for free options so you don't have to pay a monthly fee to the bank. So now jumping into our comparison table. English website app and support. Yes. No monthly fee? With a standard account, yes. Type of free payment card? So you do get a virtual debit MasterCard only, which is free, meaning you don't get an actual physical card. If you would like that, you can, uh, of course, order it, and it's a one-time 10 euro fee. Okay. Credit card available? No. Investment options available? Not really, no. Loan options possible? Yes, you can apply to uh, loan options for up to 25,000 euros. Hmm. Apple and Google Pay? Yes. Free cash withdrawals per month? You have up to three cash withdrawals per month. And to clarify, these are cash withdrawals that you can do in any ATM that you can find through the app. The app has an ATM finder and they are, I mean, the options are vast of the ATMs that you can yes. use to withdraw money with uh, the N26 account. Um, no foreign currency fee? That's correct, yes. What do you mean by that? That if you use your N26 MasterCard uh, abroad, outside of the Eurozone, mm -hmm. for example, in the US, in India, wherever, um, you don't pay a foreign currency exchange fee, mm. but the conversion is the direct conversion between the, 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 the foreign currency and the euro. That's pretty cool. Okay. Overdraft possible? Uh, it is, but I think you also need to apply for it. Okay. Cash deposit possible? Yes, it is. It is a little bit complicated. They have um, a whole guide online to uh, explain how to jump through those hoops, but it is generally possible. Okay. Partner account possible? No. You can only have one N26, N26 account. Yeah, and you cannot share it with your partner, for example. Correct. Support via? Email and chat. However, I will say the chat um, is only really working once you are a customer. Previously, it's more like a chat bot. Yes, I agree. 
You can reach actually a human, but you need to also jump through some hoops to actually reach someone directly. Type of bank? It's an online bank. Meaning there are no branches. Accepted nationalities? Uh, there is actually quite an extensive list of nationalities that N26 accepts. One of the reasons why it's also up here high in the, in the comparison. And that is 142 nationalities. However, we must say that um, India and other third party countries um, can only open account if you have a residence permit, like a, a new one that is like a check card, like a, like a, like a credit card style, not a paper version, uh, or a, a long visa in your passport. It needs to be that check card residence permit that is valid a minimum of one more year. Wow. Do you need the Anmeldo? It depends on your nationality. And you, for that, you need to check the list. <laughs> and do you need your residence permit? You also need to check the list on our guide because it depends on your nationality. It's kind of like if you need the residence permit, you also need the Anmeldung. If you don't need the residence permit, you can open an account without the Anmeldung. Now, for a recent experience with N26, uh, lately I have felt that the chat support has dropped a little bit in terms of quality of the chat, meaning when you ask a simple question, the agent tends to not understand and they have to check a lot and it takes quite a long time. And that is pretty much the kind of like negative point that I have at the moment with N26. Other than that, I still love the app. Sometimes it crashes. A lot of people complain about that, but it's not so bad because when I need it, it works <laughs> and I don't have it open for hours on end, right? And I can do transactions easily. So I'm pretty happy generally with N26. Second on our list is Commerzbank. And Commerzbank is a very traditional German bank, yet one that actually tries very hard to be modern and updates a lot of things and has most of their services available in English. Why do I say most? Because the one thing that is actually quite important, the sign up, the online application to open account is in German figures. <laughs> However, we have done a step-by-step -step detailed guide on our website, as well as a video that we will link below um, or up here, where we go through the entire application process for you in English. The one catch with Commerzbank is that for you to have a free account, you need to have a minimum of 700 euros coming into your bank account every month. That means it could either be your salary, that should be hopefully more than 700 euros net a month, or it can be smaller payments that come into your bank 700 euros a month. A lot of people also have asked, can I just transfer 700 euros and then transfer them back out? I, we don't know the answer if it's going to be free. However, let's think about it a little bit. If I would be the bank, I would kind of like inspect those things and it would be very obvious what you're trying to do. So if you open a bank account with Commerzbank, it should be for you to use the bank account with Commerzbank, not just to have it there to move money around. Exactly. I pretty much want to see cash flow. And uh, you don't have to hold 700 euros in your account at all times um, because you're obviously using the account. You just need to have an income of seven, minimum 700 euros per month for it not to cost anything. Otherwise, it will cost 9 euro 90 per month. Another thing is that they have branch banks. Yes, in the past years, they have closed more branch banks in Germany. However, they still have 450 branch banks that you can actually go there and talk to someone. And the cool thing about Commerzbank is that if you open your bank account online, unlike Sparkasse, you don't need an appointment to just go and identify yourself. You just need to probably wait in the line for a little bit, and then you can do that process directly with them. And you can also do your banking, for example, in Berlin, if you signed up in Düsseldorf, that's also possible. Yes. <laughs> now let's jump into a comparison table. So English website, app and support. Partially, like we, I said before, the sign up is uh, not in English. However, everything else, uh, like the customer service online on the phone, the banking app is everything in English. Yes. No monthly fee. Yes. However, only as we just said, if you have a 700 euro income per month. Type of free payment card. You get an EC Zero card, which is the most used or most accepted card in Germany. And you also get a virtual debit card for online payments. Credit card available? Yes, for a fee. <laughs> Investment options possible? Yes, it is a full-blown bank with a securities account, which is called in German Depot, so you have any service available. Loan options possible? Absolutely, yes. Apple and Google Pay? Yes. Free cash withdrawals per month? Unlimited free cash withdrawals at Cash Group ATMs. Cash Group is pretty much all Commerzbank, all Deutsche Bank, all Postbank. Um, so all of those ATMs you can withdraw unlimited for free. Oh, cool. No foreign currency fee? Here, unfortunately, no. Uh, Commerzbank does charge a 1.75% foreign exchange fee if you use the zero card abroad, which I would not advise anyways because it's a German card. Yeah. <laughs> Overdraft possible? Yes. Cash deposit possible? Yes, at any ATM or branch. Partner account possible? 
Yes, it is. However, you can only apply for a partner account, which is called Gemeinschaftskonto, in person in a branch. Mm -hmm. Support via? Phone, email, and in person. Mm -hmm. Type of bank? It is a branch bank. Accepted nationalities? As far as our research shows, it's really extensive. And believe us, we have asked several times in branches, online, uh, I mean, on the phone, <laughs> the customer service. And as far as we know, they accept every nationality. However, you also, of course, need to check other metrics that they scan, for example, that you have enough income or that you are not just here on vacation, for example. And a good Shufa score, maybe. Maybe, yes. Do you need the residence permit? It depends on your nationality. If you're from within the EU or EEA, you don't because you can verify yourself online via the video ident method. However, if you're from outside the EU or EEA, then you cannot use that online service and you do need to verify yourself in person, ideally in a branch. And in that case, yes, you do need a residence permit. Do you need the Anmeldung? Yes, you do. Our recent experience with Commerzbank has been great. To be honest, I have never really had the need to contact them except for research purposes, which we do for these, these videos and our guides. And generally speaking, their customer service is friendly. I feel pretty confident with them. Yeah. Um, the last time I called, which was uh, two days ago, uh, called the customer service. Our method that we describe in our detailed guide still worked. I got an English speaking agent, super friendly, super helpful. Didn't know everything from the bed, however, made the effort to ask, research and come back to me. And to make that phone call happen, I think I had to wait like 20 minutes on the line. It so was a long way, it yeah. wasn't fast, but I got my answer, which you cannot say from other banks all the time. Yes, that's true. And again, I think the customer service one gets is a reflection of also how one speaks to the customer service agent. You were also very friendly and patient. I think if you would have called with an angry voice and yelling, probably the agent would have not been so keen to helping you. So just keep that in mind. There's another person on the other side of the line, and sometimes they're not the one at fault. They're just a, a medium or a way that you can get answers from an institution that might not be able you know, to communicate with. Another bank that kind of has been revolutionizing the banking market in Germany is Tomorrow Bank. The interesting thing about Tomorrow Bank is that they're a sustainable bank, meaning that every time you spend, they plant trees and also their card is... Or invest in other like green projects and don't use it for investing in not green projects. That is true. And also you even get your card in a wooden or recycled wood, I think, material. You have to pay for that extra. Yeah, but it's a very ecological or climate um, aware friendly. friendly bank. Uh, the one kind of downside from it is that they don't have their license yet, their banking license, so they work under the umbrella of Solaris Bank is called, which, by the way, is the same umbrella that N26 worked at the beginning uh, when they didn't have their banking license yet. The change from our previous video is that tomorrow increased their fees, so they no longer offer a free checking account. However, if you look online, their reviews are relatively still good, especially with customer service. So maybe they just did a better job at budgeting and asked for money to keep their service high. So the cheapest account that you can get with Tomorrow Bank is from three euros per month, but they are of course also more premium options. Yes, and we kept them in this guide because they are very good with customer service and they're all in English and online as well. So now jumping into the comparison table. English website app and support? Yes. No monthly fee? Uh, no, it's minimum three euros per month. Type of free payment card? You get a Visa debit card, physical. Mm. Credit card available? No. Investment options possible? No. Loan options possible? No. Apple and Google Pay? Yes. Free cash withdrawals per month? No, also that got cut. You have to pay two euros per cash withdrawal. No foreign currency fee? Yes, so you can spend without any further fees uh, outside of the Eurozone. Overdraft possible? No. Cash deposit possible? Yes, via the app and partner store. So it's the same hoops you have to jump through like with N26. You can't just go to an ATM or branch to deposit money. It is a bit more complicated. Partner account possible? Yes, it is. Um, it's through the app. You can create a partner account, however, only with the premium accounts. So I believe the six and nine euro per month account. Support via? Phone, chat and email. However, I must say the phone sent me to the chat. Um, so the phone is there, but I guess only during certain hours and depends on how busy they are. And type of bank? It is an online bank. Except the nationalities. They are quite moderate, so not as extensive. They have 80 nationalities listed on their website. And what uh, stands out here that they do not accept US citizens. Crazy. Residence permit? It doesn't say so. Anmeldung? 
yes, it's needed. I would say Tamara Bank would be an interesting option if you want to support ecological pro uh, problems, <laughs> ecological initiatives and, and stuff like that. Because in the other conditions, it doesn't seem like such it a It is cool a bank. pure online bank. Mm. And it's definitely a bank where you don't care about cutting all the fees. Yeah. Which I think an online bank that you, in the case that you cannot withdraw cash, if you live in Berlin, which is a very cash driven economy, that could be a bit of a con in a way. And another contender in our list for best bank for English speakers in Germany currently is Vivid Money. Now, Vivid Money is also an online bank. However, their focus is not on sustainability, but their focus is on cashback options for you and crypto investing. So they go more into that direction. They also don't have their own banking license. So just like Tomorrow Bank, they operate with a partner of Solaris Bank, where the account will actually be. So now let's jump into our comparison table. English website, app and support? Yes. No monthly fee? Yes, they do have a premium version as well, if you would like that. Type of free payment card? Also a Visa debit card. Credit card available? Nope. Investment options possible? Yes, in ETFs, stocks and crypto. Loan options possible? Nope. Apple and Google Pay? Yes. Free cash withdrawals per month? Up to 200 euros per month. However, you have to withdraw a minimum 50 euros. So pretty much up to four times 50 euro or one time 200 euro pretty much. After that, you pay a fee. No foreign currency fee? Yes. Overdraft possible? No. Cash deposit possible? No. Partner account possible? That is a German Jein. So you don't really have a proper partner account. However, if you and your partner both have Vivid Money accounts, you can then share a pocket. So like a sub account and pretty much use that as a shared account. Support via? Chat and email. However, chat is only available if you're a customer. If you're not a customer, you can contact them through their contact form on the website. Type of bank? It is an online bank. Accepted nationalities? Very limited, shockingly limited. It is only 48 nationalities that they accept and they're really random. So don't think it's 48, again, first world nationalities or just Europe and you know, the ones that also don't need a visa, but it's really also countries from Africa, countries from Asia, mm -hmm. countries from Latin America. It's really mixed and really like by random choice to my perception. Guatemala is not one of them, by the way. Hmm. Residence permit? Doesn't seem like it because you can purely identify yourself online. There is no personal identification possible. Hmm. Armeldo? Nope, doesn't seem like it. A small disclaimer, all the links to the banks that we have talked in the comparison, you can find them in the description box below. Mind you, these are affiliate links, meaning that if you click on them and you get your bank with them, we get a commission with no extra cost to you. It's just another way that you can support this channel if you're interested in any of the bank accounts. So for one of the most burning questions is, can I open a German bank account outside of Germany? As far as we know, and all of our reaches has shown, it is not possible. You need to be in Germany to open a German bank account with a German, like a DE IBAN. So, Usually when you move to Germany recently, you need to have a bank account quite fast. I mean, that is the one thing you need to get your salary paid if you already have an employer to do other, um, get other services online, uh, get your internet, get your whatsoever you need. So getting a bank account is urgent. However, it's not easy as we just described, depending on where you're from. One more reason that before you move, you already make your appointment for your Anmeldung online. So you at least get that done as soon as possible because as we have learned, some bank accounts even require your unmeddle. Now, what happens if you need your residence permit, like for example, for Commerzbank or N26, depending on where you're from? That can take sometimes a few weeks or months for you to get. So what do you do to bridge that gap if you don't have a residence permit yet, but you really need an at least European bank account? So we know from experience and others uh, and comments and emails that we've gotten that WISE which is a financial service provider is a great alternative or has been kind of like the helping, the helping service. WISE offers a free multi-currency account, meaning you get a Euro account, a US dollar account and a British pound account. And you can give that IBAN that you get to your employer. It is a Belgium IBAN, but ideally there is no, shouldn't be any IBAN discrimination because it's still a separate transaction within Europe in the Eurozone. I agree. Um, you can also use WISE to transfer money from your home country to the Euro, to, German, <laughs> uh, to Germany, um, and save hefty banking fees that otherwise would be charged if you would use a traditional bank. So that is why WISE is generally a good option to, to get acquainted with. Yes, another thing is that just because you get these three currencies, 
that doesn't mean that those are the only three currencies that you can have in your bank account. You can add other currency as well, to currency, currency, which is crazy. And because it's a financial service, as we pointed out, but just to emphasize is that they specify or they um, specialize in transactions between multi currencies. So they tend to be very cheap. For example, I had to send money once to the US to a family member, and it was a lot cheaper than sending it from my German bank account or MoneyGram and or faster. any other. And Way super faster. fast. It was like in yeah. two days, it was there. Or less. Less, yeah. It was super fast. Very happy with the service. So as an interim solution, WISE is a perfect choice. Now, once you get your residence permit and you have all your paperwork, then it's time to consider to upgrade to, let's say, a real account or a real German bank account with any of the ones that we talked about or, or any you wish or any one that you want to, right? <laughs> now, Yvonne, a question. May I have more than one German bank account? Absolutely, yes. Ah. And I would argue, actually, it's quite common. Like, I have more, you have more. Yes. And I think the most amount of people have more just because it's good to you know don't put your chicken no your eggs <laughs> in one basket that way around and usually you know we use one account for our daily transactions like for our supermarkets and anything that we that we spend uh, also like at restaurants where we have an etsy card <laughs> and then we use another account maybe more like for having a little cushion on the side for like uh, emergency uh, savings um, or where we have our securities account so we usually split those two um kind of like banking transactions. Yes, and also it's good when traveling that you have a bank account, for example, that doesn't charge extra fees when you use the, account, uh, the card abroad versus the one that you do. So it's good to have multiple accounts. Versus the one that you do? Versus the one that you do need to pay. <laughs> Just mind you, don't start getting 10 bank accounts. I'd say maybe maximum five. Well, even that is a lot. Even that is a lot before you raise flags with the Schufa. And what is the Schufa? The Schufa is the German uh, credit score association let's put it that way we've done an entire video on it to go more into detail but um if you have i would say i mean i don't know this is a purely personal opinion more than three it becomes a little why does this person have so many bank accounts mm. not proven just a gut feeling on that one <laughs> now we have in our previous video also mentioned the possibility to withdraw cash while you are at a supermarket mm. however we didn't go into detail which we want to correct this time that this possibility only works with the German EC card, the Giro card, which in the comparison that we just gave you, actually only Commerzbank hands out. So with this card, when you, let's say, you shop at Rewe or at Edeka or at Aldi um, or at DM, it doesn't matter, you are at the checkout and before you pay, you tell the cashier, I would also like to withdraw 200 euro. Then they add that to the check, uh, to the, to the, like, um, Account, 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 thank you, account, account. account, exactly. And you pay with your card and they give you cash in hand. So that is for me a very convenient way um, to not always run around and find the ATM that I can use. However, it is limited to 200 euros per payout. And like we said, it only works with the EC card. The only um, supermarket that allows also that cash payout with MasterCard is Aldi Süd. Yes, and can you please say for vocabulary reasons, how do you ask for X amount of money to your clerk? Ich hätte gerne noch 200 Euro. Ich hätte gerne noch 200 Euro bar. There you go. So you can use that sentence. Obviously, you replace 200 with whatever amount you want. And then the cashier will understand and add that to the end of your account. Obviously, it's charged to your bank account, yes. right? It's not just free money. That would be awesome. <laughs> now, what's the big deal about this German EC card or EC Karte? The thing is that a lot of small shops and restaurants, and including also this cash out program, only accept EC card. For example, I like to call it EC card. EC card. Karte. <laughs> For example, my hairdresser, I can only pay with cash and card. But when you want to pay with card, it's like, but it's EC Karte, right? So it tends to be a thing. If you, again, you're in Berlin, which is a very cash driven economy, then they don't even accept card. Sorry for you. So if you are with a mobile bank only who does not, or which does not provide an EC Karte, be sure to always have cash at hand in Germany. Yes. <laughs> when it comes to the banks that we talked about, there is no clear winner of best bank in Germany because it really depends on your habits, on your priorities, and more importantly, on your nationality. If you'd like to open an account with Commerzbank and want to watch the video that we did on how to actually do that with the English translation, then click on the video on the left to watch that next. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers.